and girls, and welcome to Palm Sunday here at Grace Point Kids Online. Well, I hope you had a wonderful week. I have been told that a lot of you are on holiday or that holiday started for you guys on Friday. So I hope that those of you have already had a week or two at home that you've been relaxing. And if your holiday is only starting today or this weekend, well, you deserve it after a long term at school. Now, if you are new to Grace Point Kids Online, welcome, welcome. We would love to get to know you. So why don't you ask your parents or your guardians to send me, Liana, at gracepoint.co.za an email, and I will connect back with you guys and get to know you. Or you guys can also connect on our Grace Point WhatsApp Connect and we will contact you in that way. But we just want to get to know you and be part of your life so that we can know you and you can know us. So please don't forget to send me an email. Now, boys and girls, if you are having a birthday today or you've had it this week, wow, what a special birthday to have it on Palm Sunday or the week before Palm Sunday. Now, I hope you've had a wonderful birthday. So before we carry on, let's go see who of you it was and then we're going to wish you. Let's quickly zoom to the birthday board. See you back now. So happy birthday to all of you. I hope that you got all the presents and the cake and everything that you wanted. And now that it's holiday, maybe you could actually even have a party with your friends. eh? So guys, I hope you're just going to have a blessed day today. And if it was during the week that you had amazing fun. Right, so boys and girls, now, before we go into our lesson, our Palm Sunday lesson, which is so cool, I love Palm Sunday, we need to honor God with two things. The first thing we're going to honor God with is our giving. Now, guys, remember, you can either give with your pocket money or you could even give food, clothes, or toys. Those are all things honoring to God when we sacrifice those things. Sacrifice means again, do you all remember? Giving up something that is special to us so to help other people. All right, but we'll talk about sacrifice a little bit more in our lesson today, actually. So you guys, whatever you have, be it your money or be it clothes or toys, let's give it to God. Let's honor him with it and let's help other people who are in need. Okay, now before we move on to honoring God with our praise and worship, <laughs> let's quickly pray for today. All right, close those eyes and let's go. Father God, I just want to thank you so much that we um, have the privilege of loving you and that you love us back. Father, thank you that you sent Jesus to die on a cross for us. And as we celebrate Palm Sunday today, let us not ever forget to worship and praise your son for what he has done for us. Father God, we thank you for all the children and families online, and especially those who always so generously give either money or food or clothes or toys for those in need. Bless them, Father, we ask. We thank you for this day, and we thank you for your love. In Jesus' name, amen. Okay, boys and girls, I will see you straight after praise and worship, where we will do our Palm Sunday lesson. See you now, now. Good morning, everybody, and welcome back to the Worship with Kizzy. My name is Kezia, but you can call me Kez or Kezzy, whatever you're comfortable with. And what is your name? Well, it's very nice to meet you. And if you are here for the very first time, hi! I'm so excited you guys started to join us this morning. I hope you learned something new. But most importantly, I hope you have fun with us. And for all of you who have been joining us for the past few weeks, hi! I'm so excited you guys are back. I hope you learned something new. 
but most importantly, I hope you have fun as well. <laughs> so today we have two songs for you again. And this week we'll be starting with I Am In The Lord's Army. Now I know we do this quite often, but practice makes perfect. So by now you guys should be pros, right? At least that's what I think. Anyway, so for those of us who do not know it, let's go over it one more time. So we're gonna go. I may never march in the infantry, ride in the cavalry, shoot the artillery. I may never zoom over enemies, but I'm in the Lord's army. I'm in the Lord's army, yes sir. I'm in the Lord's army, yes sir. And those are all the moves. So, are you ready? Perfect, let's go! I may never march in the infantry, ride in the cavalry, shoot the artillery. I may never zoom on the enemy, but I'm in the Lord's army. I'm in the Lord's army, yes sir! I'm in the Lord's army, yes sir! I may never march in the infantry, ride in the cavalry, shoot the artillery. I may never zoom on the enemy, but I'm in the Lord's army. I may never march in the infantry, ride in the cavalry, shoot the artillery. everybody because I know I had so much fun with you guys so the second song we're gonna be doing today is called let your light shine and it's super super easy as well so we're gonna go one two three four five six seven eight and you're gonna make a candle and you're gonna go <sighs> blow it out all out. <laughs> so you're gonna go creep, creep, creep in the night. It comes to blow out all your light. <sighs> doesn't wanna let, doesn't wanna let anybody know that Jesus is alright. You're gonna go let your light shine. Oh, 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 let your light shine. Let your light shine and let Jesus shine through you. And then we're gonna go. One, two, three, four, one, two. Three. Make yourself as small as possible. <laughs> then we go. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. And then. Let your light shine. And those are all the moves. So, are you ready? I'm sorry, I asked. Are you ready? Perfect, let's go! you telling everybody that Jesus rules all right let your light shine whoa let your light shine whoa let your light shine and let Jesus shine through you giant fears are really Afraid. 
I hope you guys had so much fun because I know I had so much fun with you guys. But before I go, I would like to tell you guys all about today's lesson. Today's lesson is all about Palm Sunday because that is what today is. Today is Palm Sunday. But do not worry, Aunt Liana will explain everything to you guys. So I hope you guys enjoy your day. I hope you guys enjoy your lesson. But most importantly, I hope you guys enjoy your weeks. Bye. Welcome back, boys and girls. <laughs> Did you have fun praise and worshiping God? Wonderful. Now, boys and girls, if you have been following us the last five weeks, you know that we were busy with a series called Love Like Jesus. And for five weeks, we told you and taught you how to love like Jesus. If we want to follow in Jesus' footsteps, if we say that we belong to Jesus, well, then we're going to have to be like Jesus. Hey, And so we learned to put God first do you all remember that was our very first story? And that was love the Lord your God with all your heart, all your mind, all your strength and all your soul. That was our first lesson. Then we said, if we want to love like Jesus, we're going to have to care and be kind to others. And that was our lesson two and three. And then, boys and girls, we also learned about serving others. And we, we specifically looked at Jesus washing the feet of his disciples the night before he died and then last week we learned about forgiving and we learned about Jesus forgiving right up until the end when we had the thief on the right hand side of Jesus and he said I'm so sorry and Jesus said you are forgiven and you will be in heaven with me and Jesus also said while he was hanging on the cross forgive everybody who's done this to me because they don't know what they're doing. So Jesus teaches us how to forgive. So boys and girls, this is now the week before Easter. And we call this week from today, Holy Week. So although it's still part of Lent, we now call it something a little bit different and we call it Holy Week. And this is the week where we remember Jesus and what he did the few days before his death. Now, the very first thing that happened was on the Sunday before his death, he came into Jerusalem and, well, he was on his way to Jerusalem and something very precious happened. Now, I want us to go to the storybook corner and you are going to listen to that story and why we call today Palm Sunday. Now, before we do that, I want you just to see that our series has been called something a little bit different this week. Now, the last five weeks we're saying to love like Jesus. But as from today, for this Sunday, for our Easter Friday and our Easter Sunday, we are now going to call our series Love Jesus. And so as you watch Jesus now coming into Jerusalem, I want you to remember that now we are talking about loving 
Jesus. And we're going to talk about why we now are not going to love like Jesus, but love Jesus. Because Jesus is about to do something so amazing, boys and girls, so scary, but so amazing, so that you and I can belong to our Father in God, a Father in heaven, and sin has been forgiven, and that we can go to heaven. Okay, but we'll talk a lot about that more and more and more on Easter Friday and Easter Sunday. Are you guys ready to go watch the, the story or listen to the story of Palm Sunday? Right, let's go. And then we'll talk about that when you come back. Enjoy. Hello, boys and girls, and welcome to my story about the triumphant entry of Jesus into Jerusalem. We find this story in Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. The feast of Passover was approaching. Jesus led the disciples on the long uphill route toward Jerusalem. When they came to the Mount of Olives, Jesus spoke to two of his disciples. Go to the village ahead and just as you enter, you will find a colt tied there. No one has ever ridden it before. If anyone asks you what you are doing, tell them. The Lord needs it and will return it. The two disciples set off immediately. They found the young donkey outside in the street tied to a doorway and started to untie it. As they did so, the colt's owner said, What are you doing? Why are you untying that colt? The Lord needs it and we will send it back here shortly, they replied. The owners then let them borrow the donkey. The two disciples led the colt back to Jesus. They threw their coats on the young donkey and then Jesus sat on it. Many people spread their cloaks or palm branches on the ground for Jesus to ride over, while others waved palm trees. People ran ahead of Jesus shouting, Hosanna to the son of David. Now Hosanna means save. Others shouted, Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Many others shouted, Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest heaven. Now some of the Pharisees in the crowd said to Jesus, Teacher, tell your disciples to stop shouting. Jesus replied, I tell you, if they keep quiet, the stones will cry out. The end. Welcome back, boys and girls. Wow. Yo, guys. So all Jesus followers, now we don't know exactly who those people are. I'm thinking it could be all the people that Jesus has healed in the last three years while he started his ministry. It could be the people that he fed. We remember the 5,000. Oh, I don't know where they all came from, but I think these are the people who realized, wow, that Jesus is the Son of God and that he is their Savior. And so they come and they lay down their cloaks and they have palm trees and they sing Hosanna in the highest. Boys and girls, you know what those people did? They praised and worshiped God, just like you did with Kezia today. They just did it a little bit different. Their actions was waving <laughs> the palm trees. Their actions was to put down their cloaks on the floor. And you know what, boys and girls? What happens, happened on Palm Sunday, that week before Jesus died on the cross, do you know that four or five hundred years before that, a man called Zechariah, he actually, now that was in the Old Testament, many, 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 many years before Jesus was ever born. Listen to what he wrote. He said, don't be afraid, people of Jerusalem. Your king is coming. He is sitting on the colt of a donkey. So guys, 500 years before, maybe even more, Zechariah writes about Palm Sunday. And on that day, the prophecy of Zechariah is fulfilled. A prophecy is something that we say that hasn't happened yet. And on that day, that prophecy, that thing that Zechariah said was fulfilled, came true. And Jesus came into Jerusalem as the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords, 
Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest. Now, boys and girls, what does that mean for us on Palm Sunday? And so remember I said to you, we are now calling our series Love Jesus. Well, boys and girls, if you say you love Jesus, it means that you've realized that Jesus is the Son of God. You have realized that Jesus gave up his life to die on a cross for you. It means that you have realized that Jesus loved you so much that he took all your sin away. And so therefore, we are going to talk about loving Jesus with our worship today. Now, you have done it already this morning. You have worshipped God with your voices and with your actions Now, that is amazing. And I hope, boys and girls, that whenever you can at home, you ask your parents to use the YouTube channel and you find all kinds of praise and worship songs and you sing and you dance and you jump up and down. Every single chance that you have, boys and girls, we should be praising and worshiping God for the three things that he did. He came down to the earth to die on a cross for you and me so that Our sins can be forgiven and so that we can go to heaven and be with Father God. Now, boys and girls, there's just one little thing that I want to talk to you about praise and worship about this morning. You know what? We get so excited about our praise and worship. I know I do. That I sometimes concentrate so much on the actions and jumping up and down that I sometimes forget what I am singing and who I am singing for. So this week, boys and girls, I want you to take some time. Maybe it can be in the car. Maybe it can be quietly in your room when you put praise and worship songs on. I want you to listen to the words that is being sung. And then, boys and girls, sing those words along. And as you're doing it, praise and worship God. Not with actions, not with jumping up and down, but by singing and meaning the words that we are singing. In church today, we are having a family service and we are going to be singing, Jesus loves me, this I know. Now we can show you the actions and we do know the actions, but guys, the words are so much more important. And that is, Jesus loves me. This I know, for the Bible tells me so. Little ones to him belong. They are weak, but he is strong. Now, I have showed you the actions, but now I want you to listen to my words. Jesus loves me. This I know. For the Bible tells me so. Little ones to him belong. They are weak, but he is strong. So boys and girls, as we praise and worship God, yes, have tons of fun. Never stop doing that. But also remember to take a little bit of time in the car, at home, to just listen and speak the words of worship to God. All right, so that's praise and worship, boys and girls. Now, the next thing I thought was, how else can we worship God? Hmm, And I was thinking and thinking, and I thought, I remember that same week that Jesus was at, uh, the week before Jesus died, there was a woman. Now, some of the the disciples called her Mary, others just called her the woman. But this lady was a sinful woman. That means she did things that wasn't okay. And boys and girls, you know what she did? When she realized who Jesus was, that he was the son of God, that he was going to be her savior and that he was going to take away her sin. Do you know what she did? Wait, I'll tell you what. Why don't you go listen to the story and then you and I will talk about it. Mm, I think that's going to be better because I don't want to give away the story. So let's zoom to the storybook corner and let's see what this woman who is who's got so much sin. What does she do to Jesus that shows us that she loves him, that she knows who he is, and that she realizes that he has the power to forgive her? Are you ready? Let's zoom to the storybook corner. I'll see you back now. 
boys and girls, and welcome to my story about a woman who anoints Jesus and finds forgiveness. We find this story in Luke 7, verse 36 to 15. Now, when a Pharisee called Simon invited Jesus to a meal at his home, Jesus accepted the invitation. The guests sat on couches around a meal table. A woman who was very sinful, heard that Jesus was at Simon's house and brought a beautiful, exquisite jar filled with expensive perfume. When she saw Jesus, she knelt behind him and cried. Her tears fell down upon his feet and she wiped them off with her hair. She kissed Jesus' feet and poured her expensive perfume on them. When Simon the Pharisee saw what was happening, he thought, This proves that Jesus is not a prophet. If he was really sent by God, he would know what kind of woman this is. Now Jesus knew what Simon was thinking. Simon, he said to the Pharisee, I have something to say to you. All right, teacher, Simon replied. Go ahead. Jesus told Simon this story. A man loaned money to two people, 500 silver coins to one and 50 silver coins to the other. But neither of them could pay him back. So he kindly forgave them both, letting them keep the money. Which do you suppose loved him most after that? Well, I suppose it was the one who had owed him the most, Simon answered. Correct, Jesus agreed. Then Jesus turned to the woman and said to Simon, Look at this woman kneeling here. When I entered your home, you didn't wash the dust from my feet, but she washed them with her tears and wiped them with her hair. You refused me the customary kiss of greeting, but she has kissed my feet again and again. You neglected the usual courtesy of olive oil to anoint my head, but she has covered my feet with rare perfume. Therefore her sins, and they are many, are forgiven, for she loved me much. But the one who is forgiven little shows little love. Jesus then turned to the woman and said, Your sins are forgiven. Then the men at the table muttered to themselves, Who does Jesus think he is going around forgiving sins? But Jesus said to the woman, Your faith has saved you. Go in peace. The end. Welcome back, boys and girls. <laughs> you didn't think that was what was going to happen, right? You thought she might have just brought him food. No, boys and girls. She brought a bottle of perfume, an alabaster of perfume. Now, boys and girls, it says that that perfume cost more than a year's wages. That means that that bottle of perfume cost what your parents earn the whole year, the money that your parents bring home the whole year, that little bottle of perfume cost that much. Oh, so it was very precious. Hey, boys and girls. And what does she do? She sacrifices that because she could have gone and sold it, boys and girls, for lots of money. But you know what? She kept it safe. And what she did was she opened it up and she poured that beautiful perfume that expensive perfume all over Jesus's feet oh boys and girls she sacrificed wow that's a big word sacrifice hey she sacrificed something now what does sacrifice mean again we spoke about it in the beginning of the lesson that is to give up something that is special for you and me okay to help others or to show others that we love them and forgive them. So she used hers to show Jesus how much she appreciates and loves him. 
So she sacrificed, she gave up something so precious to show Jesus how much she loves him. Now, boys and girls, when I listen to this story, I'm thinking, what can you and I, we are just children, hey, little big children, what can we give up that is so special? Because you know, boys and girls, in the Bible it says that when we sacrifice something, when we give up something, it, is, it creates a beautiful smell around Jesus. And he smells it through his nose and he goes, oh, what a beautiful sacrifice that person made. So I was wondering, what could we do, boys and girls, that is so special, so precious to Jesus that he can go, oh, I loved what that person's sacrifice gave up for me. And I thought, hmm, that's very hard because I don't have expensive perfume, do you? No, but you know what I do have? I can sacrifice, I can give up the choice to be angry at somebody. Wow. That is a big sacrifice, boys and girls, because when we're angry, there's a reason for us being angry. Hey, but if I choose to give up my anger and forgive someone, that is a beautiful, beautiful, precious sacrifice that Jesus goes, I love the fact that she forgave that person. If I give away something that is precious to me, maybe I give away my bicycle. You know, guys, when we see the need of people out there, you know what, when we give away some of our special toys, and we still have lots of toys, but we give away some of our special toys that we, we don't play with anymore, but we just don't want to give it to people. If you give up those special toys, Jesus goes, oh, what a beautiful sacrifice. Isn't it wonderful? Oh, it smells lovely. That precious, precious toys that you don't even play with anymore, but that's still precious for you, you give away. And guys, God says, that is like that woman giving up her perfume. I was thinking, what else? Maybe it's obeying your parents, guys. Listening and obeying your parents. Even though we don't want to. Or stop fighting with your brothers and sisters and your friends. To actually invite people that you don't want to be with. Those are all things that you are giving up the right to do or not to do. And those are beautiful sacrifices that Jesus goes, oh, I love it that she is inviting that friend to play with because no one else is doing it. Oh, I love it that he is sharing his food with that child who doesn't have. Oh, I love that she has forgiven her brother and sister. Boys and girls, this week, especially this week, but also going forward, let's sacrifice and choose to give up things that will make Jesus happy. All right? Good. That was one of the things. Then lastly, I thought, no, there must be more things I can do to worship God, to show him that I love him. Because remember, worship, boys and girls, is honoring God. Now, what does worship and honor mean? That means I give respect. Hey, I show someone that I care about them and love them so much that is honor and worship. I give them my respect. I give them my love. I give them what I have. And that is honoring. And so remember, we honored God with our, our money this morning. We honored God when we were worshiping him with our voices today. So I was wondering, how else can we honor and worship God? We know now that we need to praise and worship. We know that we have to sacrifice something. But what else? And then I remembered, hey, we've learned quite a few things this Lent, and all of those things are acts of worship to Jesus. And you know what they are? Number one is to put God first. If we put God first, we read our Bibles, we pray, we go to church, we learn our worship songs, all those things, guys, that is a beautiful, beautiful way of worshiping God. It's about putting Him first. Then what about if I forgive Ask for forgiveness, give forgiveness, obey. Jesus says, wow, if you do that, I love it. Beautiful worship and honoring of God. What if I use my time and, uh, to serve others by doing acts of kindness and caring for them? Well, absolutely. That's another way of worshiping and loving God. What about my giving? Yes, when I put my 10% my into my little money box or I give away some of my toys or my clothes 
or food to those who need beautiful way of worshiping and honoring God. So boys and girls, as we go into Holy Week this week, I want you to remember these things. Number one, worship God the whole time with actions, with your voice, but remember to take time and listen to the words that you are singing and mean them. Tell God how much you love him. Tell Jesus how much you appreciate what he's going to be doing this week. He's going to die on a cross for you. And then, boys and girls, let's remember to find ways of sacrificing, giving up things that will be a beautiful fragrance in Jesus' nostrils, just like that woman with the, with the perfume. And lastly, boys and girls, this week, especially this week, let's worship God by giving to others, by doing acts of kindness by, by forgiving and serving and putting God first. All those beautiful things that we have learned during Lent. And you know what, boys and girls, which warms my heart? That all these acts of worship and honoring is going to be amazing fragrances all around Jesus in heaven. And you know what? I hope he says, oh, look at my children. They are so grateful for what I have done for them. Look how they are worshiping me and honoring me. Oh, what a beautiful fragrance is filling heaven. Wow, boys and girls, that's what I hope Jesus is going to say about me this week and also the weeks following um, Easter. So boys and girls, we are going to be back here with you on Easter Friday where we're going to walk with you every step about what happened to Jesus and why he had to die on the cross for us, okay? And then on Easter Sunday, we're not just going to celebrate with Easter eggs, but I'm also going to teach you what happened to Jesus on that Sunday morning. Where's Jesus? What happened to him once he died on the cross? Please connect with us on Friday the 7th and on Sunday the 9th. We're going to have online lessons for you for both of those Sundays. So boys and girls, as we go into Holy Week this week, worship God with everything you have, with your voice, with your giving, and with your obedience and loving. I will see you guys next week. For twice, that is going to be so cool. And you guys have a wonderful, wonderful worshiping week with God. I'll see you in the Doodle Studio. Bye. Welcome back, boys and girls, and hello, Lolo. <laughs> now, before we start, boys and girls, what do we need to do? We need to say, how to doodle it, just doodle it, doodle kids. Let's go down and see what the doodle kids have for us today. Oh, this looks very green here on this table. So, boys and girls, what we're going to do here is we're going to help you recreate Calm Sunday. So, you're going to have to go to the Grace Point website. Then go to the kids page, zoom all the way down to the Doodle Studio where you will find these pictures. Now, you will find this picture as a black and white and we've already printed it out as a color, as a palm. So that's going to become your palm tree, boys and girls. Then we have a donkey for you. Um, so that's, you will only have one donkey, but we've got four donkeys here. And then you will have a little baby leaf that we will show you where that goes. And again, you will only have one of each on a page, not like us with lots of them, um, but you will have those. And what else do we need for this two crafts? You're going to need a stapler. You are going to need some um, pegs. We need a craft stick. We need a pair of scissors. We need some glue. And we need some coloring in pencils. Yes. Okay. So guys, as you know, the very first thing we always do is to color in all our black and white pictures and to cut them. So what you're going to do is you're going to go cut out your donkey and your baby leaf. Now, if you see that, Lolo has already done that for us there beautifully. We're just going to show you a little bit more how to cut out your palm tree. So what you do is you're going to see your palm tree has got a solid line going all the way down. Okay. And that palm tree, what you're going to do is you're going to fold it in half. Okay, there we go. We're going to fold it in half on that dark line. I'm going to ask um, Adam just to zoom in so that you can see. There we go. It's on the half mark. Beautiful. Then what you guys are going to do is you're going to take your scissors and you're going to cut, guys, on all the 
dark lines and inside dark lines. Okay, so you're going to cut on the little jagged lines as well as inside the little double, the V's. It looks like lots of V's, eh? Okay, so let's go show you now what it looks like once you've cut it out. I'm going to just ask, um, there we go, Adam's going to show us nicely. So once you have cut out those V's and on the jagged lines and you open it up, you will have a beautiful palm. Look at that, boys and girls. Okay, so now let's show you how to put these two crafts together. So for your palm, you're going to take that leaf. We go, we've got one that's already finished. All is going to take that one. And you're going to take your craft stick and you're going to attach it. And it will be a beautiful leaf. You can make two of those, guys. That would be lovely if you had two. And you can use them to go up and down and praise and worship God. Just like our story, those followers who put their cloaks on the floor so the donkey could walk over it. And then they had the palm trees that they were waving, boys and girls, to sing Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest. Okay, so that's the palm tree. Now, let's see how we're going to make our donkey. So, boys and girls, what we do is, first thing is, we're going to take our donkey, which you've hopefully colored in both sides. There we go. That's it. And then what we're going to do is, I'm going to ask um, Adam just to zoom in on the donkey. We are going to take our two pegs that we have taken from mom's washing, and we're going to give our donkey two sets of, four sets of legs. Because if you look at the bo bottom of your peg, you will see that there are four little legs there. And then what we're going to do is we're going to make sure that we have some stickers. Oh, I forgot to tell you guys to have some stickers. We are going to have some stickers for the eyes. And then, guys, you're going to take your little leaf and that you have, and you're going to put it onto the donkey's little uh, back. And that says on there, it says, The donkey's cross, the mark on my back for all to see is a reminder that Jesus died for me. And so, boys and girls, if you look at a donkey, on the donkey's back, there are a little cross. Um, and all donkeys have that. And we think that is because they were so gorgeous, these little donkeys that carried Jesus when he was a baby and also um, when he was ready to die on the cross. And so that's a beautiful little poem that is on there. And we're going to stick that on our little donkey's back. And then, boys and girls, you can recreate the story of Palm Sunday with the two palms that you have made and the donkey that you have made. And you can walk around the house and you can tell everybody, Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest. And you can talk to them about the little donkey who carried Jesus all the way in to Jerusalem, just like the little donkey carried his mom 33 years before that on um, Christmas Eve. Well, I think this is a beautiful craft. Well done, Lolo. We're going to say um, goodbye to Lolo now. Um, and then we will see you next week, Lolo, for Easter Friday. Thank you for beautiful craft. Oh, I love your palm. Bye, Lolo. See. Hello, Vix. <laughs> Boys and girls, let's start our next craft that Vix has got for us. All right, let's go and see what she has. Oh. This looks very, oh, I see feet. Oh, so she's going to help us to do craft that we're going to remember to sacrifice something to Jesus. If you guys remember that lady, Mary, she who realized that Jesus was the son of God and that he could save her from her sins, she gave up something amazingly expensive. She sacrificed this perfume. And so to remember that, boys and girls, you can go and find this page. Firstly, go to the Grace Point website, then go to the kids page, zoom all the way down to the Doodle Studio, and you will find this page there. We're also going to need for this craft, boys and girls, some uh, tissue paper that is cut into small little pieces. You need a paper fastener. You need some a, a pair of scissors, some um, coloring in pencils. And if you have glitter or glue, you can even do, well, we don't really need the glue, but you can have glitter and stickers, whatever you want. And to create to make your picture just look beautiful okay boys and girls so you know what we do first we go and cut out our pictures um, on the solid lines okay so we're not going to cut out the feet boys and girls we're going to cut out the square around the feet and then obviously you're going to cut out 
your beautiful perfume bottle. Now, boys and girls, the next thing we're going to do once you've done that is to go and color in your feet. Now, Vicky has already colored in the feet for us there. Let's have a look at her feet. There we go. She's colored in the feet. So we're going to just put that one side for a minute. Now, what you're going to do with your um, with your, your vase or your, your, your perfume, boys and girls, is you're going to take some of that tissue paper and you're going to decorate that beautiful, beautiful perfume that costs so much money, guys. A year's wages. You are going to just decorate with your tissue paper and just make it beautiful. And you know what else you could do, boys and girls? You can go ask mom and just spray a little bit of perfume on it so that when you're telling this story to someone, they can smell that beautiful fragrance of the perfume. And remember what I taught you in the lesson? That Jesus, when we do something for him or we sacrifice something for him, he says it's like a beautiful aroma, beautiful smell that he can smell through his nostrils. Hey, all right. So how are you going to put this picture together, boys and girls? We are going to take our feet and we're going to take our paper fastener and we're going to attach the paper fastener and the little perfume bottle to each other by, with the little red around um, circles that you can see on both pictures. There's the round circle on the perfume bottle and there's the round circle on the feet. There we go. We're going to wait for Vicky just to put those through for us. There we go. Make sure you fasten it at the back, not too tight, otherwise it can't move. There we go. And then we're going to turn it back. And now, look, Vicky will be able to throw or pour the perfume out on Jesus' feet. Ah, oh, boys and girls, let's ask um, Adam to really just home into that. And there you go. Look at that. There's our beautiful, very expensive perfume bottle. And there we go. And we are pouring it onto the feet. There we go. Let's see. Oh, isn't that just beautiful? Pouring, pouring out. Wonderful. So boys and girls, remember you can show your love to Jesus by sacrificing, giving up something very precious to someone else. All right, boys and girls, now we're going to go to our next craft. We'll see you now. Boys and girls, let's do our last craft for the day. Wow, this is going to be a very interesting craft, boys and girls. And it doesn't matter what it looks like at the end, as long as you can have fun with it. So we are going to make a shaker that you guys can use to praise and worship God when you are, when you are worshiping Him with your actions or with your words, remember what I said, guys, that we must be careful that we don't have too much fun doing actions and doing all those kinds of things that we don't remember to actually sing the words that we use to worship God. Okay, so we are going to make a nice instrument to remind you on this. So what do we need for this craft, boys and girls? We need to have one or two paper bags. We need some nice paper color paper, uh, a string around it. You can use anything. You can use cellar tape even. Doesn't matter what you have as long as you can actually just make a little um, holder to hold your, your little shaker. We need some beans or some, this is popcorn kernels, guys, but anything that will make a racket. Then you can use glitter glue, you can use stickers, you can use whatever you want, cookies, but you are going to decorate your little instrument any way you want. Now, the first thing you're going to do, boys and girls, you are going to decorate the outside of your paper, but at the bottom part of your, your brown paper, boys and girls. So we're going to start decorating the bottom. There I want you to wor use words like worship, praise God. Maybe you can even stick a picture on there of kids that are singing, or you can draw yourself praising God. That is your choice. You can do whatever you like on your brown paper. Then what you're going to do is you're going to pour in your um, kernels into the paper and then you're going to twist the top of the paper and you're going to have that. Then you're going to tie that beautiful paper around it and use some um, salad tape if you need to so that at the end of the day, let's hear what's happening there. Oh, she's got a shaker, boys and girls. And can you see she's put their worship 
on there. She's got some glitter glue on there. She's got some stickers on there. Oh, Vicky really made it beautiful. And she's even got praise God at the bottom. And she can now go around when she is singing her praising songs. I love you, Jesus. Oh, look, she's going to use her little shaker and make music. And as she's doing that, I'm sure Vix, who's got a beautiful voice, will sing beautiful praise and worship songs to God. And so boys and girls, you can go and make as many of these shakers as you want. Hand them out to your, to your brothers and sisters and your cousins during Easter. And you guys just have a wonderful time praising and worshiping God with your instruments. Right. Boys and girls, let's say goodbye to, to Vix. Um, Vix, thank you so much for making a beautiful instrument. And um, we will see you for Easter. Now, boys and girls, before Vicky and I go, there's one more thing we need to say. And that is how to doodle it. Just doodle it, doodle kids. <laughs>